I'm gonna move now for our next presentation, which is on the qualitative research of local healthcare professionals working motivations in Syria. Our presenter is Ms. Agenta Karlstrom, and I'm sorry if I'm pr pronouncing the name um, not correctly. Uh, Ms. Agnet um, Agneta Karlstrom is a PhD candidate studying at the University of Eastern Finland, Faculty of Health Science, Institute of Public Health and Clinical Nutrition. She holds a degree of of masters from the University of Helsinki in Middle Eastern Studies. Um, she has uh, studied political violence directly against healthcare extensively in conflict setting and fragile states, where she studied violence against healthcare workers in Syria. She is a member of the adv advisory team of uh, for Finnish psychologists for social responsibility, working with refugees in Lebanon. She has frequently commented um, conflict related issues in Finnish media. Um, thanks so much for uh, joining us today, and I'm um, going to give the cloud for you. Thank you. I try to share the screen. Can you see it? Uh, yes. Okay. Okay, so thank you for giving me this opportunity to present this my paper. Actually, I have had a great team with me as a co-authors, and uh, supervisors. Uh, Hannu Jusola is a professor from the Middle Eastern Studies from Helsinki and Jussi Kauhonen is a professor from the Public Health. <clears throat> so this is the last article of my dissertation and um, so uh, in this research we were interested to understand why Syrian healthcare professionals are willing to risk their own life to save others uh, what are those motivations that keeps them going to Syria or even leave there and work? And we also wanted to give a voice to a local healthcare workers and hear their story. I know you are all professionals here, so I don't need to explain you any background of the conflict and the suffering of the civilians, including healthcare professionals that have suffered during the last 10 years. Um, actually, the research of the motivations of local healthcare workers is very limited, and there is only a small number of studies that seeks to understand why local healthcare workers decide to stay in the work and work in conflict settings. And the studies have mainly focused on the motives of expertise, especially humanitarian, Western humanitarian workers. Although we all know that local healthcare workers usually bear the most significant responsibility and the risk and the effects of war. As we do know, the conflict situation causes qualified healthcare workers to depart the country. Especially doctors have typically more resources and contact to leave the country at the early stage of the conflict. This uh, must be must the creation of professionals and the collapse of the healthcare system and infrastructure leave their civilians without adequate healthcare, increasing mortality and morbidity among the population. And during these um, 10 years of war, the violence in Syria has been so intense that it has been estimated that more than 70% healthcare workers have migrated from the country. I don't know what is the exact number now, but this 70% was something around two or one or two years ago. Uh, in our this research, it, this is a qualitative study, and we interviewed 20 Syrian healthcare workers in Turkey, Gaziantep. And these most interviews were conduct, conducted in July 2016. And uh, at this time, the Eastern Aleppo was still under the control of uh, opposition groups, and the regime and Russia were regularly conducting deadly airstrikes. And also ISIS had a strong presence there and uh, areas under their control. But we did also some uh, additional interviews in 2017. Uh, we used used snowball sampling methods to find participants because we think that this is a politically sensitive issue and, and it, this was possibility to find the participants to conduct this study. Uh, <clears throat> the average participant was uh, 37 years old male 
a doctor with a speciality and from Aleppo. He was married and he had a, at least one child. But we also interviewed nurses, pharmacists, healthcare managers, and dentists. And not all were also people from Idlib, Homs, Hama, Raqqa, and Deir es Sur. The, these participants, they worked for the NGOs, and most of them lived in Gaziantep and still travel to Syria. And some participants live in Syria, but at that time they were in Gaziantep and we were able to interview them. We divided the motivations into intrinsic and extrinsic motivations. These uh, intrinsic motivations arise from the individual itself. It's a desire to do something, even if there isn't the obvious reward. And the extrinsic motivation are generated from external rewards and include money and opportunities for employment, non-material reward, rewards such as better social status and increased knowledge. Uh, in, in our study, the participants indicated several, both in extrinsic and intrinsic reasons for their choice to work still in Syria. And these, uh, we, the, we analyzed two main intrinsic groups of motivations, uh, humanitarian values and medical ethics. If I see a person needing medical help, I will give, I will give the medication. I don't care about the nationality, religion. And this was the most common answer. Uh, improving people's life and reducing suffering was also very important factor. And the participants felt that their professions granted them the ability to help others. They believe also that they have a duty to help the suffering of the civilian and they expressed a feeling for being a responsibility for them. The second group was ideological and we divided into three different parts. Uh, this was kind of a patriotic uh, reason. Uh, they are my people. It is my country. It is my city. Somebody should do that. I know that it will be a risk. This was also quite common. Uh, they felt that they have to help their civilians inside the country. Then we also had a political motivation. This was not uh, so common, but many mentioned that they wanted the democracy and human rights for all. And uh, they also described widely their role as a pro-democracy and human rights activist even before the conflict started and they they had a experiences of the being uh, captured by the regime even before the conflict and then we have that uh, this was only one said the religious reason we are brothers of Islam and there is a relig religious idea that we are serving our brothers in relig religion and we cannot turn back from them. So this was the intrinsic motivations. And as I said, the humanitarian values and medical ethics was the most important. And the extrinsic motivations were economic. Several, this was several interview participants regarded economic reasons as important motivation. Uh, I, need to I need to work because I need to survive with my family to have income. I'm lucky because I have work in Syria. They were li living in, um, I, 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 in Gaziantep and they didn't have money. So they went to the Syria because the NGOs typically pay some salary. And then there was also professional reasons. Uh, they wanted to maintain their medical skills and knowledge to continue their work and of, this was commonplace among the doctors and without the opportunity to practice their profession they were fear that their skills would diminish, diminish over the time. So as a conclusion uh, as this study indicates the healthcare workers had a strong motivation to continue the work despite these really, really hard conditions. At that time, healthcare workers wanted to fulfill the humanitarian values and the medical ethics. 
and their connection to the locals and the connection uh, country was strong. Uh, the Syrian nationalism has a long roots in the modern history. However, the ideology among the participants is not connected with the ruling Ba'ath party, nor the president Bashar al-Assad, but the Syrian themselves. We call this kind of a new nationalism, which, is, which means that that country with civilians, but no the ruling party. And uh, this study has several strengths and limitations. I think it's a, this is a baseline study to understand those Syrian healthcare workers who decide to leave uh, work, even their life can be in danger. Uh, and we had a multidisciplinary team. In, uh, we had a professional uh, a professor from the Middle Eastern studies and the public health, so we kind of uh, mixed this. And the limitations is uh, that we interview only those who were working either on opposition side areas or Kurdish controlled areas. Uh, we did it, we did it, did not have those healthcare workers who were working under the regime. Uh, I think it would be a bit a different picture if we interview those. I think those may view loyalty to Assad as a true patriotism and may even consider the opposition as traitors. I don't know. Their motivation for working would most likely present an entirely different. But what we need is that there is a further, definitely further need for re research that is focused on local healthcare workers and their life amidst the conflict, not only in Syria, but like in Yemen, and all other countries that are experiencing conflict. And when we understand their motivations and experiences, it may be possible to provide them support and continue to, that they can continue their work. So that's about it. And uh, we have submitted this paper and I hope this will be soon published. Thank, Thank you. you. So much. Um, I'm also hoping that it will be published really